guys, it's Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands. Today we're going to be playing with all sorts of things. Um, sweet wrappers, scrap fabric, tea bags, and cardboard from old tissue boxes. So, die cuts, metal shapes, come in thousands and thousands of different shapes and sizes and whatever. But if they're like this butterfly, they are open so they're not a solid shape like this gentleman here is solid and the dress is open so this technique can be used for i would say the majority of open dyes so i'm going to do butterflies and i'm going to be doing this like romantic couple just to give you some ideas now the materials i'm going to be using are cellophane from sweets a couple of butterflies i've got here they were made from tissue boxes so cardboard from tissue boxes and that's a good resource because they're usually pretty bright and colorful tea bags have been made without milk so before you put milk in today i'm going to use it to um do a backing on one of the butterflies now these things um, I would term as ephemera and making up ephemera so I can use them on cards or dangles so that's the reason I'm doing them today so I need to cut out first of all some of my dies so that I can back them or I have some fabric to back them with as well for the die cutting machine you have two cutting plates your shim and your base I'm going to use the shim and a cutting plate at the bottom it's actually a very thin card but as you can see i've cut the romantic couple out now i'm going to cut it out twice for each thing and that's because i want to do a back on it oh so i'm going to do these this in black as well and then we'll do some more colorful things so it's just basically putting the cutting plate on I put my base down, so I roll through till it's gone, and then I roll back again. Mainly because I haven't got a huge amount of room on my desk to keep it going through at the moment. Take that off. This cuts through quite nicely. Now I use my pokey tool just to get rid of all the, the bits that need poking out. Hence the word pokey. Most of it falls out of its own accord, but there's a few bits. When you're thinking of putting a backing on something to shine through the holes in a die, um, you need to be thinking about what bits you want to back. Now, on this particular die, you have the dress and you have the hole for her hair and her arm and her hand holding his back. So those bits wouldn't be appropriate to have the colour behind. So you need to be aware of that sort of thing if you have a, a more intricate dye. Now let's get some butterflies done. Now I've got some beautiful bright green here and I want to do this little baby butterfly and this one. We run these through but we need to run both of them through twice. Let's just check if they cut okay. Looks like hope these bits are it's quite a few little gap. This is what we're looking for because otherwise there wouldn't be any point in backing it. Okay, so that's one butterfly. Let's see what's happened. Now some of these have got like heart shapes to them. I'm not going to save them this time, but sometimes it's worth saving the cutouts because they can be used for other things. And we'll do one more set. There's one of these. One of these. Back through or replace them. They still work when they're banana shaped because they go flat, flat as they go through the rocks. Right, so that was those up. Move those to one side because they don't want to get them muddled up with the other dies. Nice red, nice orange, or pinky. Yeah, we we'll use a pinky one for the flower and the other butterfly. I can tell you that the flower is a Sizzix, but I'm not sure about the butterflies. I think they may be a Timu, but I can't be 
100%. I know they're fairly recent purchase. A lot of dyes have a little hole that uh, you use the pokey to poke the actual bit out. Right, so that's my flower. These are cutting out really nicely. Okay. We're nearly there. Nearly there. Nearly there with the cut. Anyway, so we have that one flower. These two I'm going to do back to I need to find partners for them all now. And then we decide what we're going to put between the sandwiches. These are like the slices of bread and our bits that go in between are the, the filling. So delicate is you don't want to be ripping them. The trouble is if you go back and try and re-die cut them you can never get them in exactly the same place so it's tricky to to do that so you just have to start again. So what I'm going to go is use my tiny tiny pine scissors and just trim along the edge where it should have cut and then get that up and then that should be okay then that's it gotcha right you were troublesome but we got there in the end hope you're not going to be quite so troublesome it's always best to get into a routine of making sure your dies are all out and there's no residue paper because you might not see it when you go and cut next time and that might have been the problem before i might have left a bit of paper in and it's just cut through properly and there we go right so we need to choose what's going behind what now we know what's going behind our romantic couple so we can get that one done first now i want to put the orange here but i've got to bear in mind that i don't want this little Hole here what I need to do is put my glue around this bit here and then when I trim trim to this edge and put my glue down so put the glue where it's needed to be put my cellophane on and then glue this bit to the top well I've trimmed at least a bit and then I can trim the rest this off on the side once they're both pieces together. Go down here, around all these little bits. Do have to be patient with these intricate dies, but they're well worth it in the end. And you can do much with them with a little bit of imagination. Okay, so that's there. Now place my cellophane, just trying to smooth it out a bit. I want a little bit of wrinkle in it because I want it to look like the dress is folded. Now I was going to trim this edge, but I think we're actually quite good. Looking from this side, I can't see. There's no orange showing. All the dress is covered. Let's stick the next piece on. Oh, nearly fallen off. How come that's that? I have a headless bride. Prom queen or whatever she is. I'll let you decide. What event are they at? Are they at a ball or are they at a school dance? Wherever they are, they do look like they're enjoying themselves. Right, this is the fiddly bit. I'll try and get it all I'm going to start at the feet and try and get his back line even. Where it's torn a little bit, just sort of put a tiny, tiny little pearl or something. Very decorative as well. Push down nice and hard. Now I don't want to be cutting this until the glue is completely dry because it might pull it. Now we could always have them facing the other way and have it this side as the real side. Okay, so we need to find a tiny little pearl. Now I'm thinking of the little dots that I used for the earring last episode. Oh, there's a little star, barely visible to the naked eye. What do we think? Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's go for it. It just covers up that little tear on her neck. And the gold goes nice with the orange of the dress. There we go. Right, let's let that dry and we'll see how it looks once it's dry. So, that's the sort of principle of the occasion shall we say shall we try this flower next now i thought the flower might look quite nice with this scrap fabric between it let's see what it looks like with the blue yeah i think that would look quite we've got the pink again but that would be like a self-colored one which might not be too bad or we've got a tea bag but i don't think the tea bag's quite big enough oh maybe only just big enough put the tea bag in so yellow and green and self-colored pink those ones we'll do the tea bag for this one. 
So those two can go on the blue. Maybe the flower would look nice with that. Oh yeah. So we'll put that on the flower and I'll put the tea bag behind the butterfly. Okay, let's just get gluey, shall we? I've also got some gems and that to decorate with because we want to get the butterfly's bodies. To, we need a centre for the flower. This one's going to be slightly trickier because I don't want it sticking right through. I don't want the glue sticking onto my mat. My mat needs a good clean actually. I haven't got much of this left so I want to save as much as I can. And again, we use the card to squish it down. This glue doesn't take long to dry. We should be able to get them all nicely trimmed and decorated. I'm just trying to work out which way this flower goes because it's opposites isn't it that's what I'm getting confused with so don't do as I do do as I suggest and glue the right side now when I go do the button guys make sure I do it the right side okay guys right let that dry let that one dry who's next these I know I've got to do the non-pattern line you can do these sided and then put them just straight down on, the, on your project. I think it's fun to encase them because you might want to put a little bit of string on either side of that and hang it. This one's going to be a different colour either side. It's difficult to imagine what they're, the final is going to look like when you've actually got the ex, excess um, cellophane. Okay, that's that one. Need you to dry. Now we'll do the D bags get this right so if I put a little dot where I want to do wrong sides facing each other one of the ladies I watch regularly girl Augustinelli calls the antennae antlers she's one of my favorite youtubers and she does journal making etc but she does lots of other craft work alongside it right it doesn't matter that this is coming over the edge here um, because it's only the gaps that we want covered and it it's covered that gap so that's not a problem now i think the romantic couple are probably dry by now so we've got one with the tea bags a couple different ones with the cellophane and one with the fabric let's trim these and we need to get a better idea now what they look like without all the excess around them i'm using my Delicate little scissors. Oh, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Without the excess there. Well, it would if I could get it in the screen. There we go. And you could, you know, do different ones, different colour dresses, depending on your colour theme. I know one day I'd use it. It's, uh, I get asked, why are you collecting this? Or why are you collecting that? I said, because I'll use it one day. So that will make angle on the side of something or even as part of a mobile or something like that you can make lots of different color butterflies or whatever you your theme is um, and then hang them on a mobile a bit of string between them and then make a lovely decoration in front of a window or something like that where it catches the light now the fabric one this is the interesting one I think now I'm going to trim off the excess fabric. Again you could possibly use base, chiffon, but you need something quite lightweight I think. I suggest not much heavier than a light cotton. We have a flower with quite a nice bit of sparkle. I'm quite happy with that. Right and the last one that we've got prepared is our tea bag butterfly. He's not going to be shiny but it could be different. You could possibly ink your tea bags and you know have them different colors so you've got the fabric there you could possibly use serviettes or tissue no don't want to cut your antlers off come on we have our tea bag butterfly our fabric flower cellophane couple and our double-sided butterfly so maybe instead of using this yellow vein let's see if we can do a bit bit of book page now the problem with the book page is you can't see through it to match up the other side so to get the butterflies either side so you might have to wait for it to dry 
and then cut it out stick the, the other one on and then cut it out again so it's a bit more fiddly but we'll give it a go and it might work better with a slightly bigger butterflies I don't think I've got any more cut out at the moment while this is drying we can do the pink cellophane butterfly and do a self on self now I want the biggest block of writing so I'm going to go sideways I'm going to be daring and go sideways now I know it sounds harsh but I might cut off this one's um, antennae because it's going to be very very fiddly to cut round and to do it twice see how I go once it's dry I think some of these are easier than others depending on the amount of openings you've got and the width of the um, bit that's left I quite like that because it's got the two tone on it so the butterflies aren't quite matching up they've sort of shadow, got a shadow layer um, which is quite fun okay so we need to trim around the edges on this one in fact this one doesn't have to be thinking about it doesn't have to be double because if I'm sticking it straight onto my bit of ephemera yeah he doesn't have to have a second bit I can just do two butter book page butterflies now I'm going to place it on there and show you what it would look like double sided but I don't think I need to but I was thinking I needed to cut it out twice but I don't do I because if I cut it out once I just lay it on the cutout bit my brain, my brain's not working properly because you've already cut it out you just lay it on top of what you cut out but what I think with these ones is I'm not going to be double siding it because I'm just going to use these um, on cards as they are they do look quite sweet with the book page in I'm going to stick this one on another bit of book and use them as they are that's book page butterflies I'll do this one long ways. It's nice to get a big block of writing rather than the gaps in between. Let's move you up so I can see, you can see me. Decorating similar to his twin but not identical because they're not identical twins. They're just twins. It's funny how in nature that, you know, the, the bugs, caterpillars that, you know, these beautiful butterflies come from are uninspiring yet the butterfly the adult is so inspiring all right so that's another idea you can stick your die cuts on book pages and use them grounds and you could actually you know square it off and leave it as a label as well so that's another idea i will trim a bit more neatly around it yeah she's got a bit of shadowing where it's not quite lined up properly but I think that looks quite effective. Right, so that's a little pink cutout. Now you're decorated already. If you've got your necklace on. I might put a dot on her hair thing. Yeah, she would be wearing something on her hair, wouldn't she? If she was all dressed up with a prom. So let's... You can let your imagination run right with these characters. You can give them names. Here we go, Pamela and Jonathan. We're off on high school prom and doing the jive. Yeah, that just finishes it off. Now where that glue is there, what I'll probably do is put some glue all over so it matches. It gives it texture. So you can make a, a simple mistake into a little feature. Yeah, because that'll go with the black from the book pages, wouldn't it? On these trims, there's a bit out the side where they join together I'll just come along and get the bits off and that gives him a little body here we go yeah so it's Mr Big Page finished off okay so I'll pop you up there. let's try a little Miss Pink now I do have some pretty pink trim oh yes very good trim around the edges that's better. Dry first, otherwise we'll smudge wet bits. Right, so your pink one side and blue the other. So what have we got for you? Let's see, maybe a bit silver. Yeah, maybe a bit silver. 
So we need about four down. This one hasn't got antenna to worry about. Um, you might want to maybe do a gem on the wingtip now. My flower's going to need a gem in the middle. Come back to you. Now I've got this, but this is probably a bit too heavy for the butterflies. So we've got a pale pink and a dark pink. Now, having said that, that white flower would actually go quite nicely in the centre of this flower. Yeah, that looks quite pretty. I like that. It's quite pretty. Quite, quite pretty. Right, you should be dry enough to have your other side done now. I wanted to find my nylon thread. Now, you possibly can't see it, or you might just see wisps of it. It's like sewing with hair. It is so awkward, shall we say, and I've just spent the last five minutes trying to knot the end. But there now, what I want to do is I've set these up in an arrangement, um, and I want to sew from, well, it doesn't matter if it's back or front, I suppose. And I'm going to pull it through and catch the loop and then I'm going to try and loop the bottom of that one through. I'm doing it very loosely to start with and then I can tighten it up and secure it where I need to because I can always glue it down if I need to. Now I'm going to run the thread across the top because you'll see it very well anyway and through the top of the butterfly here and then on to the next one and then once I've got it all in I can go back down to the bottom butterfly and um, we can position it where we want it space it out and then I can seal it off and I'm going to go through the flower up around and to almost the top of the flower so I'm literally way through the petals of this flower and trying to get it even as I can. What I'm trying to do is line them up on the board and do them two blocks apart and then that will give us something to, to work with. Now this is just to secure them, it's not to hang them with because um, I need to probably hang them with a bit of ribbon or something. This is a bit tricky but I think it will be worth it in the end. Um, don't need to go to the bottom of this one. This is where I'm going to secure it round. So, there we go. We have a little sun capture type thing. And I will attach um, a little pink ribbon to the top of it to hang it on. You can barely see the threads to work with, let alone as a visual, a visual thing and that's the other side. All that effort I think it was well worth. Um, so we have our twins, little book page twins and our romantic couple. Get you all in there, squidge up guys. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll be back with more fun and frolics. Much love everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.